Blessings, blessings, and happy new year. If you have tuned into this channel because you may be going through some difficult times in your marriage, because you are facing issues maybe of divorce, separation, um, infidelity, whatever the case may be, I want to, to take this moment to tell you that if you have been going through this for a while, it's time to reset. Yes, that's correct. I said it's time to reset. You may have been in this situation, I know, a little bit longer than you would like, and you feel as if that it's the end of the road and you do not know what else to do. It is not the end. It's just the beginning, a beginning of a new season for you. And so I want to tell you that this is the perfect time to do that, right? This is the perfect time to reset. This is the perfect time to recalibrate. This is the perfect time to rearrange everything that you have done in the past few years, right? So as you begin this process, I want to give you two things that will be very helpful as you go on this journey of resetting. One is make a decision. Job 22 and verse 28 says, you shall decide on a matter and it will be established for you and light shall shine upon your ways. When my husband's infidelity was exposed, my entire life with him flashed before me. And then I thought to myself, what will I do? What's next? You know, what, what is going to become of my family? This moment called for a decision, a decision that I had to make. You may be at this point now, what I would call the valley of decision, where you have to decide what is your next, right? You have to make the decision, not your mother, not your pastor, not social media, certainly no one else who is not in that covenant of marriage. It is you that have to make a decision. I made the decision to fight for my marriage. That decision was not only about me. It was not only about my husband. It was about my children, my children's children, and my children's children's children. The road ahead of that decision was not easy, but light shined upon my ways. And I am a testimony that it was well worth it. The second thing that I want to tell you that you need to do is write your vision. Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run who reads it. If you do not have a vision of where you want to be, where you're going, what are you standing for? right? You will have to, you will take a, any road that may lead anywhere. If you do not have a vision, you will be tossed to and fro with every opinion on multiple, uh, you know, YouTube videos, just looking for answers. If you do not have a vision, you will listen to any and everyone. As a result of that, you will only be left confused, right? More confused than you were in the beginning. A vision gives you a clear path and direction. It helps you to avoid distractions and it keeps you from wasting precious time. No matter what your position is, as long as you have breath, there is hope. So I encourage you, as you have entered into a new year, make valuable choices. I assure you that even though you may be going through some things that you feel as if that there is no coming back from, I want to tell you that earth has no sorrow, heaven cannot heal. And if God can do it for me, he most certainly can do it for you. The ball is in your court. You are the one that is the deciding factor if you are going to make it to this or not. The scripture tells us that if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Let me tell you something. It's not up to your husband. It's not up to your mother, your mother-in-law, 
It's not up to the other woman if you are going to survive this season of your life. It is up to you. So I encourage you to be strong in the Lord and in a be, and be strong and in the power of his might. So the decisions that you make from here on now is up to you.